Hey everybody, welcome to My Suburban Oasis. My name is Soleil and we are here in a Zone 5B in mid-Michigan and that's where I garden. And today we are here for our weekly walkabout and garden tour and I'm so excited to take you guys around. September is one of my favorite months of the year, second only maybe to June. Maybe they're a tie, I'm not sure. But I love this month because the season starts to cool off. We start to get a little bit more rain and it's the perfect time to start dividing and transplanting and planting new things and designing for next year and moving things you've been wanting to move all season long. So today we're gonna to walk around the garden, look at some things that are absolutely beautiful. And we're also gonna talk about some of the plans that we have for the future. So come along. All right, let's get started. Well, our planters are hanging in there strong. After we had a really thorough rain, we planted them up. And then right afterwards, these grasses got a thorough watering. We had probably an inch of rain in just a couple of hours here. It was pretty incredible. And then today we even had some more rain, more of a mist, if you will. And so everything is still really lush and green in the garden this week. And uh, we have some new blooms to show you. I don't know if you can see, get a little peek of them off there to the side, but the Tiensha and Seven Sunflowers are blooming now. So I can't wait to show you those. If you've never seen them bloom, they are a beautiful, wonderful flower. So the potage is doing great. I have lots of green tomatoes over here in the garden that I'm just waiting to harvest. Hopefully they'll still, you know, continue to ripen up a little bit further while they're still on the vine. Otherwise, I'll be picking them and making some fried green tomatoes because that is a delicious dish this time of year. And over here, I have trimmed back the sedum in these two pots. You remember this was just completely overflowing and you couldn't even see the urns, but I cut them back and I think they look really beautiful now with the grass and even those little geraniums that still remain. They never got very big this year, but I kept them in there nonetheless and they add a nice little pop of color. The strawberry sundae is still looking fabulous in this corner of the garden. I don't think I'm ever going to get any blooms on the clematis vine that is back behind it, but it's doing much better this year. Next year I expect that we will actually get some blooms on it. So next year will be its second full year. So I planted it about a year and a half ago in the fall there. It does take some time for clematis to grow on, so be patient with them. It can be hard, but uh, they definitely do well after they get their roots established. So over here, the Virginia are looking really great, you guys. This is a wonderful way for them to go into the fall season, looking nice and healthy and full of green vivor. And definitely the irises are starting to go over a bit. They were looking that way a couple of weeks ago, but um, I still have a little bit of tidying to do in here and before we get uh, too far into the fall we'll be pulling out a lot of the dead foliage and then these service berries that are in these cages I've actually been thinking about taking those out and replacing them with something else this fall because they've been in this garden bed for three years and generally as a rule of thumb I give plants about three years to do well in my garden because it does take that long for most of them to really truly get established. After three years, they're not doing that great. At that point, I start to think whether they really belong in the place that I've planted. And that's what's kind of happened this year. This year, I expected to see more growth on them for them to really take off after establishing their root system, and they haven't done that. So we're going to probably be taking those out. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to, you know, plant them someplace else or not, or if maybe they're just not happy in my garden. So not, not too sure yet, but they'll definitely be coming out of where they currently are. Well, over here, I think things are looking really, really pretty, quite full. And you might notice um, I have laid a nice fresh, layer of mulch along the rocks because I moved them out a few inches. So one of the nice things about the way that my husband trims around the rocks in the garden, he uses his string trimmer to keep the grass from growing between the rocks, is he trims it a few inches in front of the rocks. And what that means is every year, if I see a place where I want to move the rocks out, despite and much to his chagrin, I uh, am able to do that because he has created a little bit of space for me to do that. And this garden bed is almost as far out as I would like it to be. Um, it does have a nice little bit of a curve to it still, 
but I had wanted to bring this one out just a little bit further. And I think it's looking great right now with the Dianthus up in front, just blooming along. This is that Telecote purple. And this variety is planted all throughout my garden. The little limes are looking great back here, as is the Pinky Winky. Just a lots of beautiful contrast and wonderful growth in this garden bed this year. Things are looking great. Well, I'm also considering taking out the Patriot Hostas that are in this garden bed because they get full sun and this year they really didn't do great compared to many other years. And while that might be an anomaly, I happen to think that some of it is just due to the fact that we are experiencing some climate change. And so I'm thinking about replacing those with something that's a little bit more sun hardy and sun tolerant or something that just really loves sun because this definitely faces the east and it's still open, wide open to the sun that comes in from the south. So this is the south end of our yard. Well, let's take this time to walk over towards the Tian Shen Seven Sunflowers because my goodness, you guys, they are absolutely beautiful. Now it's rather cool out today, so we don't have as many pollinators out and about in the yard. But you'll see that we still have lots of bumblebees. I don't know if you can, but hopefully you can tell that there's lots of bumblebees and pollinators that are attracted to these blooms. They're very small blooms, but they are very abundant on the end of all of the stems and they are gorgeous. You know, they're these nice small blooms that create these almost panicle like blooms on the end of each stem and they are absolutely stunning with all of these flowers. Doesn't this just look like a bouquet? A giant life-size outdoor bouquet right here. I mean, it's amazing. And the wonderful thing about it is it smells so good, you guys. I don't know if it smells like honeysuckle or jasmine or orange bushes in Florida, but it certainly evokes childhood memories for me of being down in Florida and the sweet scents in the evening as you go down the street there. So I just think this is a wonderful addition to anyone's garden and I highly recommend it. This will probably get to be about 12 feet tall. And so it's going to get quite a bit taller. This is probably at about seven feet now, I'm guessing. And uh, maybe it'll even get taller than that. It could get up to 15 feet tall, probably. You know, I mean, some of the the measurements that they put on plant tags are not always accurate. A lot depends on your garden and what the growing conditions are and whether it's ideal for that plant or not. I certainly think it likes it here. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm telling you, if you guys could smell this right now, it's just a wonderful offset to the deep, deep magenta blooms of the summerific hibiscus and the lavender chiffon. Rose of Sharon. I've been thinking about moving the Lavender Chiffon Rose of Sharon, but then I see this trio together and I'm like, oh, I don't know, maybe I wanna keep them and have them just push up against each other like this and really like mingle amongst each other because I think it's a beautiful combination. You know, the magenta of this color really offsets the interior of the bloom on this lavender hibiscus and then the tiny blooms on the Tian Shen Seven Sunflower are really so different from the other three or the other two that it just makes for a great trio, I think. All right, well, we have a beautiful arching branch on this rose right now. This is the high voltage rose putting out more stems and more beautiful blooms at the end of the summer. Because while it feels like fall here, it really is still summer and I want to celebrate that. That's one of my favorite things about September. We get such wonderful weather. Um, and at the same time, it's still summer. We have a ways to go. My first frost date here is right around October 15th. And usually they tell you to begin planting six to eight weeks before your last frost date. But if I did that here, we'd be talking about the middle of August, which is some of the hottest time in our shorter growing season. So we don't do that here. Um, I typically wait until right around now, at least September, to begin doing any major dividing and transplanting here in zone 5B. So if that's helpful to you in providing you with a little bit of a guide or a reference point uh, for your garden, I hope it is. I'm really looking forward to doing some changes. 
All right, well over here, this garden bed is looking really great. The thundercloud cloud plum is really, really healthy still in this area. And underneath of it, you can see we're actually getting a really nice second flush of blooms on this hydrangea. This is the Bar Harbor Seaside Serenade Hydrangea. And it is a smooth arborescence hydrangea. And I transplanted it last fall. I just moved it back a little bit because it was getting too much sun. And it didn't do very well this spring because we had such significant drought. But after the rainfall we've gotten in this last, um, towards the end of the summer here, it definitely has really appreciated that and has rewarded me with some blooms. I really am enjoying having this sedum over here, so I think I might divide it. This is the, I think it's called lemon jade, lemon coral jade, lemon, I don't know, it doesn't turn color, so it stays like this kind of lime color. And so I'm thinking about dividing that one and taking out these two barberries at the front here and perhaps putting them right out front. I think that will give a nice light color that will kind of contrast with some of the other darker colors in here. I think that'll look pretty. I'm loving the lime green of this hydrangea right here. This is the same one as the one just over to the right here, but I did not move it last year. So it's been in the same place for several years. And so it's much more prolific in terms of the number of blooms. And they're just beautiful. This is the lime green that they will stay until they begin to brown over. So I may cut some more of these. This is the perfect time of year to be doing hydrangea cuttings and to dry them as flowers and I love to dry them and then use them in decorations outside during the winter with uh, greenery from cut Christmas tree boughs and that kind of thing. I think they look beautiful in the snow. I do leave some on so for instance I will leave these blooms on this year because this is a lace cap hydrangea. It doesn't um, weigh itself down or get its branches broken by ice and snow in the winter time for me. So I usually only trim those that are not lace cap varieties, like the very full paniculatas, such as my stra vanilla strawberry, firelight, those type of hydrangeas. But uh, my quick fire and uh, this one, along with my hmm, diamond rouge hydrangea, those ones will stay up during the winter. All the longwort has really, really come back with abundance. I could divide that if I wanted to as well. I'm not sure that I will this, this fall because I have quite a bit of it, but I also do want to add some more plants to the Wayback Garden. So I'm thinking about what I'm going to be moving back there. And this may be one of them right here because I do have a little crowding issue happening around this Pieris. So I may just dig up this, um, this is the, not the pinkaboo, this is the spot on pulmonaria. So this spot on pulmonaria, I may remove a couple of those and take those to the way back garden just to open up that space a little more. This shade garden is looking fantastic. I'm getting ready to do some plantings back here. Gonna be moving some things around and we've definitely had some of the scabiosa go over in this garden bed, so I need to do some deadheading. But we still have some blooms. And they're very fun underneath my birdhouse pole here. Every year I try to add a birdhouse to it. Usually in the winter time, because it's just kind of a project that I can actually do out in the garden without having to plant something. The lime is definitely popping over here and the Hakona Chloe grass is putting out lots of seed heads now. Hopefully you can see the beautiful fluffy seed heads on that and I think those are gorgeous. One thing about them is that they don't tend to work for actually growing new plants. So I tried to do it last year, but all my research has shown that they are really not viable seeds that come from the seed heads on the Hakona Chloe grass. So maybe don't bother trying, but definitely enjoy them. And they look really beautiful uh, in the winter time. 
almost like a little bit of a wheat. So I definitely will leave these standing during the fall and will not cut these back over the winter either. Well, you can see this oak leaf, oak leaf hydrangea over here has begun to really turn brown. But once the weather actually begins to turn cool, I find that I enjoy brown much more than I do when it's hot out because instead of looking like a withered, dried up plant, it just seems to, you know, kind of go with the season much better. And so I enjoy it. Well, our transplant over here has done really well. It's taken good to its spot. And this is our bloomstruck hydrangea with one giant bloom on it. And so hopefully over winter it will do well. And you can see that our little hottie hydrangeas in these two garden beds right here are doing great, but they still aren't blooming. They're about on the same schedule as my limelight hydrangea that I just planted last year as well. So these were just planted last fall and I think they're gonna take another season at least to begin to get on a schedule. I love the colors that are changing already on this Jacob's Ladder. This is the Heaven Scent. And just look at all of the mottled color on those leaves. Isn't that beautiful? There's like purples and reds. It's just gorgeous. And I love that about fall. All of the colors that suddenly come forth that you haven't seen before. You know, where you've seen greens and blues before, now you're gonna to begin to see oranges and yellows browns and different tones. Well, this time of year, you can expect to see some really large blooms if you have any hosta royal standards. And they are beautiful, large, giant white blooms that smell amazing. And so I highly recommend these. They're kind of a limey color green. Um, they're definitely the latest blooming of any hosta that I have. I have another one down here. And as the winds kind of die down during the day and the evening comes around, the scents definitely waft about the garden and you can really enjoy it. Now next to this, one thing that I want to point out is this Virginia. This is the ripple effect Virginia. And while I love it, I want to make people aware that apparently the money does too, or maybe the groundhog. I'm not sure which one, but something's eating its leaves. So I wanted to share that with you because these are the other Virginia I have back here and they are undisturbed by any of the animals. And these ones are the evergreen ones. So I probably won't be planting a lot of the ripple effect Virginia, much to my disappointment. Now I do have a couple of pretty and pink lungwort that are right here along the path that I've let kind of grow on. They were self seeders and I hope to take those into the way back garden this year. Either that or I will take a full size one from here to the way back and kind of plant the smaller ones in here. We'll see what I decide. Now I talked about in an earlier garden tour this year how sometimes variegated plants kind of don't necessarily vibe with me all of that well. One of the things that I like about this one is it has a really soft variegation. So I think that's what I've kind of figured out for myself is that I like variegation as long as it's soft and not like a super strong contrast. So if you have like a dark green and a very light white, maybe I'm not so much into that, but this soft kind of yellow along with this kind of greenish blue to me is really, really beautiful. I know many of you shared with me that you have kind of similar feelings that you either really strongly love variegation or you think it's just a little too much for you in the garden. These ferns are doing amazing, amazing. I'm loving them. I know I say that every time I take you around on the garden tour, but look at them. Look at the texture on those. Isn't that beautiful? Let me get you really close. I love it. That's the Japanese tassel fern. I just love the kind of arching habit of the growth along with the very fine detailed fronds. And they're kind of furry. I don't know how else to describe it. Hairy, furry, something like that. Well, I definitely think that this hydrangea is happy so far, but we've been getting lots of rain. So I think this one's gonna do great over the winter here, so long as we continue to get these nice temperatures and some cool fall rain. 
I definitely have a little bit of editing to do in this garden bed back here. It's very full and very lush, but if I leave it like this, an important thing is to recognize that if you're starting to push the bounds, next year it's gonna be out of bounds. So that's what I'm feeling like is happening here. So we've got a couple of things to do in this garden bed this fall as well. Now I never do well with overwintering grass in the garden. And last year I did overwinter one and this one is still here. It actually has come back. So this is just a mini one of the desert winds like the ones that I planted up on the deck and it's doing okay. It might, it might be okay. If it can establish itself, I think it will do fine. It's just that I have a really, really difficult time getting these established because I tend to plant them in the fall and not in the spring. And they would probably do better in my garden being planted in the spring. Now, the other thing is that I'm not a super large fan of ornamental grasses. I wonder how you guys feel about them. There are some that I really like and, uh, some of them, I don't know, sometimes I just feel like they get a little out of control. Look at the beautiful bronzing on this foliage of the azalea this week. Isn't it amazing how quickly sometimes things can change over? And rather than being just brown and crispy on the edges, these hostas, because we've had such cool nights, I mean, all the way down into the mid 40s here, they've started to kind of orange and yellow out a little bit. So they're starting to take on that hue of more earthy tones, but we're still getting these beautiful blooms with the firelight and the penstemon together. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Let's keep that color coming for a couple more weeks at least, right? I'll take whatever I can get of that. All right, I'm seeing some blooms on this, which is another Pieris. This is the Valley Rose Pieris. And this one we planted this year. So it's always nice to see that something you've planted is doing well. And I can tell that because I see those nice new bloom spikes and the nice new foliage at the top here, which is fantastic. That means we're gonna see some blooms on that early in the spring and we're gonna get to enjoy the buds all throughout the winter. Someone mentioned in the last video that groundhogs must be the uh, state animal of Michigan, but I think the mosquitoes are in a uh, pretty good running for that right now. Or I guess they're an insect, but they're definitely vying for a title. We had so much rain, you can tell my little lime is just flopped over here in this corner. It doesn't have that strong of stem yet, stems yet. This is its you know, second full year in the ground. So I'm hoping next year it will be a little sturdier. I've got a bit of cleanup to do, a little tidying with these daylilies over here. And this is where my limelight is, you guys, that is still working to put on blooms. I planted this last fall as well. And the Diamond Rouge Hydrangea. And the long border is definitely starting to take on different hues also. You can see we're beginning to get some color in the sedums and all of the hydrangeas have gone over to either pink or like a deep burgundy or even a little bit of browning. But I love it. I love these colors right here. And I'm not gonna cut back the Roseanne geranium that is just crawling through the bed right now until we start to get like a frost or something like that or until it stops blooming whatever happens first right now I'm just going to let it ramble I love it I've been so happy with how the butterfly bushes have done in this area I have not had this great of luck with them until this year so I did move several of them here so this is probably about three or four I'm not sure which but it definitely pays to plant those in multiples and it just looks like one giant bush at this point. We're getting some blooms on this clematis over here. This is the Comtesse de Bouchard. I also have one further down in the long border, so it's really nice to have that kind of repetition here. And we're starting to get some of the blooms ready to open on the daisy. So we should see those coming up this week. And this is that beautiful purple chrysalis 
or maybe it's blue chrysalis butterfly bush. This is like the tiniest butterfly bush that you can possibly get. It's probably about 12 inches high by maybe 18 inches wide, something like that. You can see we're starting to get a lot more orangey colors also in our garden beds. As the mums begin to open back here, the majority of them are actually orange. And it really starts to bring out some of the orange hues and some of the other types of foliage that we have. So for instance, right here, you can see how it's just drying that color in. The little devil nine bark right now is just shining. I think that deep rich color is gorgeous this time of year. And we've got some brand new blooms on our red rose along with some buds. So I think we're gonna to continue to get some more blooms on that beautiful rose. I'm really glad that we opened up this area so that we could see that a little bit better because I just love the contrast of that with the, the little devil. And this strawberry sundae has dried a really light pink color this year. And I think that's stunning. These are just some really massive blooms. And I probably will cut these again because they are a very full paniculata. If these get doused with ice and snow during the winter time, they will break the branches and I definitely don't want that to happen. So I'll definitely wait past the first frost and such before doing that but we'll come through and take those out. I do need to start coming through and trimming off my Millennium Allium here. You can see we have lots of spent bloom heads. But something that is beautiful back behind them is the gorgeous Neon Sedum. So I wanna show you these blooms and how bright they are because they're kind of hidden otherwise. But it's a really gorgeous pink color. And I think this time of year, it's so nice to have that. And then this is that Comtesse du Bouchard, Bouchard Clematis, along with the Verbena. And we have another orange mum that's getting ready to open up here. We've gotten some beautiful new growth on this Japanese maple awfully late in the year, but we still again have about six weeks until our last frost date. So it should have plenty of time to still harden off. Well, things in this direction are looking gorgeous. The hydrangeas again are just kind of drying. I've taken some bouquets of these incredible hydrangeas. I've continued to get additional blooms on some of the salvia down at the base here. And uh, I have a friend, my bunny friend, there he is right there. He's not very afraid of me. Do you see those mosquitoes flying into the camera? They're like giant birds. It's like the state bird of Michigan. Hi, bunny. Now look at this combination right here. This is gorgeous. The neon sedum with the little hottie hydrangea and the gorgeous alyssum. If you don't follow me on Instagram, um, I do have an account there. I think it's called My Suburban Oasis and um, I post pictures of my garden there, uh, kind of in between some of my videos in case you're interested. I enjoy taking photos of the garden as well. And I love the color on this. This is the uh, berry white hydrangea and I will be taking cuttings of this as well. But we have some brand new blooms on this and some gorgeous tall spikes that have yet to flower. So we'll be able to enjoy some fresh white blooms here soon also. And in this garden bed, we actually have some white mums. So rather than having the orange, um, we will get some white, beautiful white flowers that will offset those nice new white flowers on the hydrangea. Just something a little different. All right, let's head out into the front garden. Well, again, more blooms from the hydrangeas. We're gonna get some, some fresh ones coming on here as well, where the deer had eaten the tips earlier during the summer. But I will be taking some of the, the blooms off of there for drying and decoration. And then we have this gorgeous wall over here with the burning bush tree. 
and the Eastern Snowball Viburnum. And we have the Royal Fern. These are giant. These are probably a good five feet tall and a good five feet wide each. I've got about three of them in here. And they've lived here for a really long time, probably 15 years. Um, and they've been a wonderful addition. I just love the way the fronds are on these ferns and they come out a nice kind of limey green and the texture is just fantastic. They're the biggest ferns I've ever grown, even of ostrich ferns. And those are kind of invasive in our area, so those grow really crazy here. Well, in this long border, which we could probably call the coneflower border at this point in time because there's so many of them, they are starting to go over. We're seeing lots of seed heads form, and these are perfect for our wonderful friends, the goldfinches. They come in and eat them and they flit about in here and it's beautiful. They're such a bright yellow color and they fly in this swooping dipping pattern that is so fun to watch. And you can see the mums are also blooming quite a bit in here and we have some asters even that are peeking through. This is a pink aster right here. And suddenly we have a petunia back here that's come back to life. This wave petunia is starting to crawl all over the rows. So it's a bit wild right now. I definitely need to come through and start pulling perennials out of containers. So I have some dianthus in here as well as a blue blooming ground cover. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's really gorgeous. So I need to pull it out. I need to get those down into the ground before um, we get too close to the frost because I definitely want them to get established well. And now we're starting to see some color on the fruit on this crab apple. This is the Louisa crab apple. And you can see all of the fruits are starting to turn this beautiful burnt orange red color, all hanging down in through here. And the animals will love them and we just will get to enjoy their ornamental value for a little bit of time. Now I'm also thinking about coming through here and I had planted some of this, I don't know, again, the lemon coral jade, lemon jade, lemon coral sedum, I don't know what it's called, but it's right here and it's not doing super fantastic because it's not getting that much sunshine. So I'm not sure if I wanna keep it here or not. I might leave it and give it another year to see how it does. It's being kind of overtaken by the coneflowers, so I may cut those back just to give it a little bit of life here at the end of the season and see if that helps kind of give it a little second wind. But let's take a look down here. We've got some beautiful gara. And then on the end, like I told you, we're starting to get these beautiful orange pumpkin mums. They're not called pumpkin mums. I'm just calling them that for fun because they're cute. They look a little like a pumpkin when they're in full bloom. Look at all those buds and all those blooms. I didn't plant these this year. These were planted last year. I got a lot of questions from you guys about how you know if something is a perennial mum or how you get them to perennialize for you. And I just would say plant them early, as early in the season as you possibly can. So if you can buy them in springtime because you have local nurseries that sell them then, do it. Um, if you can't, then plant them right now. Give them a good six to eight weeks before it's time for your frost to come because the roots need to definitely grow on. If they don't, they will not survive the winter time. At least not here in my zone. That's been my experience. Well, it's official. The Dreamland Geranium has gone over and I need to come through and clean that up along with some of the other salvia that is in this garden bed. And I think that's going to look at, make it look a lot tidier. But I love the color, you guys. I still just love, love, love the color in this garden. Sometimes you put together a garden and you feel like, yep, that was it. I did it. It turned out great. Other times, not so much. Well, this one, I feel pretty good about. There's always changes to be made for sure, but we have the Autumn Joy Sedum in here and we have the Bobo Hydrangeas in here and we have that 
powwow pink echinacea. And then we got that telecoat purple dianthus and all sorts of different colors of purple and pink salvias throughout this garden bed. And I think they have made a wonderful, wonderful combination. You can see the purple cone flowers look good at the front of this garden bed too, I think. And we've kind of got those <laughs> mixed in together with ferns, which people ask me a lot, like, how are you planting cone flowers with something that's a shady fern? I don't know. I think it's just to do with the fact that we're in a more northern zone. Like, I don't think you could get away with that in a zone 7 or a zone 8. I think that um, your cone flowers probably wouldn't bloom very well for you there. I don't know. We have our viburnum right here. This is the wabi-sabi. It's put on quite a bit of new growth this year and it's starting to add some fall color down in here. And I think that um, next year we're probably going to get some blooms on it. I think next year will be like its third year in the ground. And for me, I have found that viburnums definitely take a while to establish before they actually begin to bloom for you. So if you haven't seen blooms on yours and it's just been a year or two, be patient, give it a little time to establish itself. And we're definitely going to divide some of these chrysanthemums. These are the goldfinch variety. They have beautiful yellow blooms on them and I'm gonna probably focus on dividing that one at least. That one's probably the biggest one and add a little bit more along this garden border. And you can see we're starting to get some of major blooms like on this side that faces west and south on the mums. And I think it's really pretty up against those bobos. Those bobos are a little bit small still yet but as those grow on, I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful as they kind of topple over these mums that are kind of a purple, pink red. I do need to come through here and kind of clean up the cone flowers a bit because it's looking a little bit scraggly. So I'll cut those back all the way down to the ground. And like I said, we have some salvias in this garden bed that need to be cut back as well. Getting lots of new growth on our boxwoods, which is nice because I kind of gave them a hard prune this year. I'm happy to see that. Next year, I'm probably going to give them a little bit of a hard prune again, just to keep them within a size check, to keep them in bounds of the stone boundary here. Doesn't the lawn look nice though? It's so nice and green. All this rain has definitely given the lawn a whole new life during the second half of summer. It's kind of crazy. Usually it's this way in the beginning of summer. Well, after moving all of these pots from the back deck to the front here during vacation, I ended up leaving quite a few of them because I was surprised by how well they did out front here. I thought there wouldn't be enough light for them, especially like, for instance, the salvia um, that really like a ton of sunlight. Maybe not, they're not blooming as much as they could be, but um, they seem rather happy here along with the geraniums and we have some aster. This is super fun. I found that one had kind of uh, grown in the garden somewhere so I thought well I'll just pull that one out and pot it up and so it's been growing on during the summer in this pot and it looks beautiful. Just what I was hoping this time of year. And everything's looking nice and lush. I've left that tomato plant. It's still here. So growing. Probably a chipmunk planted that. Then we have these gorgeous hydrangeas. Look at all the little colors on that. This is the Cape Lookout. And this is the last color it will be before it turns probably a brown color. But hasn't the impatience really grown on it? I love having the impatience here and I'll probably do it again next year. Um, I don't like to repeat things too often in the garden because I don't like to get bored. I like to see things new and try new things. But sometimes if something works in a particular area that's kind of hard for you, stick with it if you want. Why not? Then you can focus on some other areas and do something fun somewhere else. I mean, I've got lots of room to kind of play with things in my garden. I'm very lucky that way, I think. Got about a half an acre here. So this Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangea back here is doing great. 
It's super happy after all of this rain. I love it. We're going to have lots of blooms on it this month. And uh, definitely, oh, look, we see a little aster popping up in here too. We definitely um, are seeing some nice revitalization of this hellebore after replanting. It has straightened up and is looking like it's enjoying its new space. The hosta back here that we transplanted does look a little bit worse for the wear, a little yellowing around the edges, but that's normal. I did cut quite a few of the roots. I wasn't even sure that I was going to replant it. It'll be totally fine next year. We're going to divide this yellow hellebore. It's happening soon, very soon, this month. This is the one that has like some spotting on the face of it. It's a very unique one. The only one that I have that's like that, and I want to make more of it. It's getting nice and big. So we're going to split that at least in half. Maybe even more if we can get more. And this month, you guys will be excited to hear that we are going to start planting in this garden bed. Maybe even... I don't know, sometime this next week? Yeah, so I'm super excited about that. I can't wait to show you what we're gonna plant in here. This area of garden usually has brown grass this time of year, but it's looking pretty good. So, I think I'm gonna be adding some limelight hydrangeas, the ones that are in my garden pots back here just to add some additional height. And um, this PG hydrangea, for example, it, it could be very, very um, floppy. And limelights can be as well, but I think the PGs are worse. So, at least from what I hear. So we'll see. But those are kind of my ideas for now. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with everything and how it's looking in the garden this time of year. And I hope that you have enjoyed walking about the garden with me in uh, September, even though I'm trying to swap mosquitoes away from my sieve face right now as we speak. Um, yeah, so we'll see you in the next video and I can't wait to start planting and dividing and transplanting with you. So we'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.